Hello and welcome to your weekly bite-sized podcast here on Four Lads Had a Dream. My name's Andrew and to discuss Rangers, frankly, atrocious 3-2 loss against Ross County are three of my very favourite podders. First of all, Stevie, how you doing, mate? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. There's obviously a lot to discuss for this one. There is. Uh, second of all, Kenny, how you doing, mate? Yep, been better, but yep, looking forward to it. Cool. Uh, well, I'm glad you are. Uh, and finally, Shona, how are you doing? I'm very well, and yeah. I'm just uh, looking forward to tonight's discussion. I'm sure there's a lot to, to go through, so it shall be interesting. Yes, indeed. Um, we're going to try and keep ourselves restrained and keep this to a lean half hour. Uh, but I suspect if uh, we got any of our esteemed podders or indeed myself onto a bit of a tangent, we could probably go for a few hours. We're going to try and avoid that. Um I'm going to just quickly run down, you know, the kind of facts of the game. Uh, obviously, Rangers lost 3-2 to Ross County. We were 1-0 up uh, just before half time um, with a own goal from the Ross County players. We did not look particularly uh, impressive during that first half. Kenny, you actually made the point in our group chat at half time that we had to pull the finger out or we were going to get beat. And uh, yeah, within the first five minutes of the second half, we were 2 1 down. Uh, Rangers didn't really look like they were capable of responding. Uh, they then got a third through Sims in the 69th minute. Again, Rangers never really threatened, didn't really push forwards and, you know, kind of threatened to attack. We get a penalty in the 89th minute, Taff pulls one back, but. Ultimately, it's all for naught, and uh, Rangers drop points at a crucial time of the season. So, um, I mean, just on the bare facts of it, there's nothing particularly great about that. Um, hey, we scored two goals, at least, except we didn't really. We got an own goal that looked really fluky and a penalty. So, not exactly a stellar performance by any metric. Um, pretty atrocious. Stevie, you were at the game. Um how was that for you, mate? Disgusting, atrocious, disgraceful. Use any adjective you want to use, mate. Um, there's no point in trying to sugarcoat this. And we give them a lot of praise when they deserve it. And they've deserved it for a number of months, the way they've played, and especially how they've kicked back. But facts are facts. Four points in 12, they have shot the bed at all the wrong points. And unfortunately, the the real issue is that we've seen all this before, Andrew, and it's the same players, the same actors, and it's the same thing. So we got away with it last week, and we all made the point that we got away with it last week in terms of getting a point in the context of the game, which was pretty decent considering how we played and how we started and how we performed, but we just took that straight into this game. And even at half time, being 1 0 up, every single one of us in that way end were saying, if we don't wake up, similar to, to be fair to what Kenny said in that chat, we're going to find ourselves right up against this. Four clear opportunities for Ross County created in that first half. If you think about even the first minute, the boy at the back post shot, which button saved, they had a header, and then a shot from the middle of the, the goal, which they put over. The warning signs were there. Now, it's all right Clement saying that he told them at half time, but we clearly didn't fix any of it because that was a mess. And people might remember me saying there was a problem with this midfield and I couldn't quite figure out what was going on. You seen that all, all to bear yesterday, Andrew. So... There's so much to dissect and discuss here, but overall, I would love to say I'm really disappointed, but in which I am, but I'm not surprised because this core group will shit themselves continually year after year, and it's a recurring theme. And yeah, I'm sorry for the, the French and stuff like that, but how else do you explain it with this group that they continue to do it over and over and over again? We have had this conversation. I, I, I remember writing this about Gio about this core group, that they will cost him his job. And that was two, three years ago. So here we are again. And it's still as raw as it was yesterday. And I can't help but feel that they've blown it big still. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, Shona, in terms of our lineup, then, uh, a, a few of the familiar faces, Butland and Goals, Tav, Goldson, Suter and Barisic in the defence. Uh, Barisic obviously coming back in. Lundstrom and Dell, Dell also coming back in um, with Cantwell, Silver, Seema and then Dessas. I mean, in terms of that lineup, there are a couple of uh, new people coming in. Uh, Barisic and Dowell, I think in particular, 
uh, two coming almost out of the cold um, in terms of how they how much they've contributed over the past few games. Or was there anything about that line out that stood out to you in particular? Um, any kind of uh, glaring faults, or was it just a case of ultimately we've just got this team, we've got a kind of limited group of players who are actually fit and we we think in a position to contribute? Uh, what did you make of the selection? A wee bit surprised not to see Matondo in there. I think Matondo's performances and his goals that he's con- contributed in the last couple of games, I think he deserved a start. A wee bit surprised, obviously, because I think he's more on form than what um, Fabio Silva is on. And then, obviously, you've got the likes of Barisic. I think Barisic was always going to come back into the, into the left-back position. I think, um, look, I, I think overall, when I looked at the game, I think Tavernier was probably what, the worst defender out, out of the four, as well as goals. And I think the amount of balls that were getting caught over the, the, the top. So, as of the lineup. I think it's a bit surprising. I think me and Stevie spoke about this earlier on, and 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 on the game from the game yesterday. Why is Kieran Dill been able to get into a starting lineup from back, really back back from a quite a serious injury and play try and play ninety minutes? I think for me, I think the Clermont got the team lineup wrong. I, I expected Sterling to be in that midfield, especially with Sterling having coming back from not not as serious as injury as what Dill had, and I think Sterling would have probably would have been fitter in that role. But I think I've said to a few times now that um, what I'm finding wrong with the midfield, I think obviously me and Stevie have spoken about this as well, but there is definitely seems to be something wrong with that midfield. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because Lundstrom's playing week in, week out with a different person right beside him. He doesn't look the same as what he's been, what his performance have, what we have before that. And I don't know about you, but I feel, I feel as if this team, when Lundstrom's playing, he really needs to sit with another holding midfielder. I think when he, he sits there with the likes of Jack or Raskin or... Um, even the likes of even sometimes when it's Tom Lawrence, the, the performances weren't great with, with Tom Lawrence, but I just feel as if with, with John Lundstrom in that middle of the park, I think he really needs somebody in that's sitting beside him and not, not him doing all the work. And I feel as if maybe he still looks a wee bit leggy since he's came back from the European trips. But I think overall, I think um, maybe a few surprises that the guys thought that, um, or the fans thought that Goldson would have maybe, maybe would have been dropped after his performances. But... Apart from that, it's just your usual suspects, isn't it? That you you know pretty much what what Clement's now going to pick. But even the likes of Scott Wright to start last week and then not even get into the squad this week, um, it's just there's just a really a couple of few surprises in there at the moment, and I think it's coming back to haunt us. I think we really we really need to get some more consistency in there, and we're not really getting that at the moment. Can I just can I say on that? I feel sorry for Clement, and I've said this continuously that I think he's really punched above with what he scored, but I have felt in recent weeks it's a wee bit like seeing, you know, throwing shit at the wall and seeing what'll stick. And I felt like that last week and it and it feels it feels like that again yesterday. I think that sometimes it doesn't really make sense and he's trying to get something to click or something to fire. I don't know, Kenny, if you can agree with that about about that. I just like right, I think Sean is right. Like how can Wright come straight in and then be straight back out? Like and we know and see the amount of early substitutions, Andrew, that we're having to make in these games, even at half time and fifty minutes and stuff like that. There's something wrong there, and this isn't one or two games. This is you know it goes all the way back to Kilmarnock away, having to change it at half times like that. Cortez injury has affected us more than I think we'll ever have realised at the time because the balance of that squad is completely off. I think Sean is right about about John Lundstrom. John Lundstrom is is completely faded as well. So I know, but I did a wee bit. But it, it does feel to me like there's a desperation in some of the selections because he's trying to find something that's working. I think that's with exactly a great it. bit of depth. Stevie, I think he's, I think he's aware. I think you, you we, we you said it last week on pod. Uh, we've all talked about it. The the midfield doesn't look quite right. There's something. It, not missing necessarily. There's just something not not working in it, and I do think he is. Um, well, he did say he was going to use all of his squad, but I agree with Shona. I think that Kieran appearing from nowhere kind of stunned me yesterday. I was just sitting giving it that I'm not sure that's the type of game for what who is an effectively an attacking midfielder when you've got. Tom Lawrence, who's been there all the time, playing in, in that, that kind of position, and all of a sudden Lawrence is benched, he's on. You've got Barisic appearing from nowhere. So uh, Scott Wright, as Shona said as well, look, Clement is not with, you know, he deserves a little bit of criticism, I think, um, purely on getting it wrong at, at times. He is, you know, but 
let's not kid ourselves on. Where he's taken us to be in this position, uh, I don't think any us would have envisaged that when he, he, he turned up in October. The issue I have at this minute in time is that it was across the board. You, you can't say there was any part of that team function properly, perhaps with the exception of Butland. And even then, I don't know if you noticed that in the first half. You were up at the game, guys. He wasn't coming off his line. There was a couple of times he really had to come out and get the ball and didn't do it. Uh, and that shows a lack of confidence to me in, in the team in general uh, because he's been immense for us this season, Butland. Uh, and I'm not here to criticise him and I'm not here to particularly criticise any of them because it's a team game and it was rotten from start to finish uh, yesterday. I thought it was... Uh, I said last week about the first half against uh, Celtic last week, I thought it was a horror show. Uh, I thought it was even worse for 90 minutes yesterday. Uh, I, I, let's not kid ourselves on, it's Ross County, and th we were quite fortunate that they didn't score five, six, seven goals yesterday. They tore us apart from middle to front. They, uh, you know, they just carved and walked right through us at will. Uh, so that's where my concern is that, and this is where we're talking about Clermont, I, he must have seen that in the first half. And I agree with this is where I would give him a little bit of stick. He said that he warned the players, you should have changed that. He, he, at half time, it needed change for me. Uh, and I don't know if it, we are maybe perhaps just a little bit light in, in the middle of the park at the minute, where we actually need another body in there for the way that Clermont wants to play. Uh, which might well cause us a bother in terms of up front because uh, we're, we're suffering badly as it is up there, but losing a body from up there might cause us to score even less goals. We have problems at the minute, let's not kid ourselves on. Six goals conceded in two games, lucky it's only six. Uh, this is the wrong time to start shitting the bed. And it, it, I've got to be honest, that's what it looked like to me yesterday. Just a team terrified to make mistakes and reverting to type from Goldson to Tavernier to Barisic to Lundstrom coming back, taking the ball off a centre half. Where the centre half is standing is crazy. Uh, it's never going to work. It's never going to work against anyone. Um, I, I just thought it was quite. <laughs> quite stunning to watch in all the yeah. wrong ways yesterday, to be honest. I, I think that's right, Kenny. And I think if we look historically, uh, all the on this day in Rangers history, Twitter accounts, um, I'm looking back at some of these and, you know, especially if you look at Walter era, it's all towards the end of the season. So there's a lot of gutting it out. 2 nil wins or 1 nil wins or 2-1 wins. Just a lot of, we need to perform, we'll get a result one way or the other and we'll get it over the line. Um, and that's built on solidity at the back. Um, some of the most successful Rangers teams have had the strong defences. Hell, our last league win came off the back of a record-setting defence that we had in the league. Um, we've had two players who have been pretty consistently in that defence throughout, that, throughout you know, our past six years. And there are captain and our vice captain. And I think the problem is when it looks like your captain is bereft of ideas, and when it looks like your vice captain is terrified of giving away any kind of goal scoring opportunity, that can only affect the rest of the squad. Um, these two are part of the you know leadership group that we have within uh, within that Rangers squad. Um, and at the moment, probably just on form, those two look the worst in form at this point. Um, just in terms of how poorly they have been performing. And you can point to Tav's goal and you can point to Tav's numbers and you can point to Goldson's solidity as a central defender for us over past seasons. But the point is that in the here and now, they are not performing as we need them to be as we need them to be performing. Um, uh, especially Goldson has looked shit out of confidence for a good number of weeks now. And he's meant to be the heart of that defence. At the moment, um, and it's unusual to, for me to be saying this, but John Suter looks the more assured part of that defence, which is not something I thought I'd ever be saying, um, especially given how, you know, John Suter has performed 
in in some some of the earlier games of his Rangers career. But the point is, we've had these players in place for a long while, and it's rare that they can put on something that will surprise us. I think we all know that we have these potential weaknesses and these potential flaws within these players. The problem is that all of these are coming home to roost at pretty much the worst possible time uh, in this league, Shona. And um, yeah, it, it's difficult to know where to go from here. Uh, but we can see that that is starting to affect the rest of the squad as well, because as uh, as Kenny said, front to back, there wasn't a single good performance in that team. Um, and that's strange to be saying, you know, in a 3-2 win, because on paper, 3-2, a 3-2 loss rather, it seems like it was a relatively balanced game. But the truth is, we've all watched that game. We know it wasn't a balanced game. Uh, so, I don't know, Shona, what do we do from here? Can we can we afford to drop our captain and vice-captain just before the run-in? Uh, I would, personally, at this moment in time, but it's not going to happen. I think, um, look, I think if anyone's going to get dropped, it would be Golson for Balogun for me. I think Balogun probably more understands, I think, Balogun's been really, really unlucky. I thought he was in really, really good form before he got his injury and obviously then suitors came in. Look, the manager will just not drop Conor Golson, will he, or Tavnir. Let's face it, guys. I think we've got, we can't really be doing this at this time of the season either, even though personally I think the league is already done now. I think if um, we just, we can't go to their place the way we've got our, the mentality of these, bo- these boys or these uh, players at the moment, um, it's, just, it's just not there. I think, as you said, we always seem to manage to shit ourselves at this at the, at the crucial time, the most pivotal time of the season. Like I said, seven games, that's all they had to win was seven games. And now Tavernier's now coming out and saying that oh, every game now is a cup final. We should be five points ahead like by this moment in time and we shouldn't have to be thinking about these th- th- this sort of attitude that we've got. And for me, it's just down to the whole mentality of this group. I think, as, as Stevie said, it's the same core, it's the same movie that you're seeing over and over again. And when it comes to the crunch, we never seem to manage to get over the line. But it was, it was not even that. It's the goals that we've been conceding recently as well. The goals that we've conceded are really, really poor. And then to go into a Ross County game and to get two goals, one of them being an own goal and one of them being pretty much a quite a, not a dubious penalty, but a very, very lucky penalty, I would say. It's just not good enough. And I think um, what I wrote down earlier on was, I think uh, Ross County only had 33% worth of possession. And it had one of the highest XGs that they've ever had against us. And obviously that was the first time they've ever had a win. So, look, I think um, there's a lot of work that needs to get done with this defence. I think, obviously, we need to look at that in the summer. But for a moment, in this moment in time, I think it's crucial that we get Ridvan back. I think in the middle of the park, you need to go with somebody that's a bit more physical in midfield than the likes of Dowell and Lawrence at this moment in time. I think with the physicality that's going to be coming up against well, these teams, they're not. They're going to be fighting. They're going to be wanting to look at us now and think, well, we can get a result against Rangers. I think, as I said before, I think Lindstrom really suits somebody in there that's a bit more physical right beside him as well. So I would go with the likes of maybe Sterling um, in midfield or even Nico Raskin. I think Nico Raskin could have done a good job yesterday just within, within the tackle. And I think I mentioned this as well to Steve on the way back. What I noticed about Ross County, not only were they physical against us, but they were putting their bodies on the line. They were throwing themselves in front of tackles. And I, I don't know if this is just because of the discipline issue and maybe the referees that we've got up here, but we're really, really scared. I don't care if somebody gets a red card for going into a challenge that maybe saves us from 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 a goal or whatever, but the challenges at the moment that we're making, some of them are, are, are really, really, really poor. I think um, yesterday, I think um, Sterling sold himself for the for the goal. I think it was their, their third goal when uh, Lawrence wasn't physical enough with their, with their winger uh, um, to start with. And then obviously... Sterling sells himself and then Lundstrom just standing there in the middle of the park and the guy's got a tap in. Once again, I think there was another ball that was played over the top. This seems to be an issue with us as well. And I think it was Connor Golson. He doesn't make a tackle. He doesn't go towards the player. The player then plays the ball into the middle of the box and then it's an, it's, an, it's another easy finish. I think Butling probably could have done better for one of the two of the goals as well. But look, it just seems to be a consistent thing where over and over again over the past few weeks, we've been conceding really, really poor goals. We did exactly the same against them the week before. And this all stems down, I think, for me, since the Motherwell game. The Motherwell loss for me, I think we've not really, really kicked on from there. Um, I think that's really had a bad effect on Golson when he was playing against the likes of Theo Bear. And um, obviously, I think Tavernier had a bit of a poor game that, that, that day as well. So, uh, for me, that's the mentality. They haven't been able to get over that game. And obviously, it's carried through now. And it, it was just going to be a matter of time. And like I said, we said this a couple of weeks ago in the pod, all these guys need to do is win the next six games. And they're pretty much, they've won the league. But... It's the same guys that bottle it every single time for us. And unfortunately, 
look, I don't know what the answer is to this at this moment in time, but I think what you need to do is the manager needs to go with the players that are on form at this moment in time. And for me, you've got to be playing Matondo over Silva. Um, I know obviously Silva was involved with one of the goals, with the, the own goal with the fl- flicked on header. And I think he was involved with the, the chance that, De- that Dessert should put in the back of the net. But for me, you've got to go with Seema. You've got to go with Matondo and you've got to go with Dessers. They're the front three that have been scoring your goals this season. Um, and yeah, I think I would rather go with them. I think um, I don't really know when the last time that Silva scored a goal, to be fair. Um, but yeah, for me, I think um, there's got to be a lot of solutions between that, the middle of the park and the, and the front for me, because there's just far too much space. I think even that Danda, was it Danda, the guy that's, that's off to hearts as well? Did you see yeah. the amount of space that he had for the ball that was played over the top against uh, yeah. Tavernier? Why are we giving these guys this amount of, amount of space? And this has been going on for weeks now. So, like we said, I think there's definitely something wrong with the defence. They're obviously dead shaky. That needs to get sorted. But who do you put in there apart from Balogun? And then, obviously, in the midfield, I think we need to really, really uh, tighten it up a wee bit. And I think we need to go a bit more dis- defensively for the next six games. And then up front, for me, I think um, you've got to go with Matondo. I find it hard to argue with any of that, Shona. Um Stevie, before we came on, you were obviously very enthusiastic and excited to be talking uh, about this game, reliving it. Um, but I mean, as Shona says, where do we go from here? Uh, it's um, it, it's one thing to have a, before, a poor performance from, from you know, one area of the pitch or one group of players. Um, it's another thing to have basically your entire team collapse on you at the same time. Um, because then it's not an easy and obvious, oh, we'll just take him out and put him in. Now we've got a position where every area of the pitch, from defence to midfield to attack, seems to be completely bereft of confidence. As Shona says, where do we go from here? I think there's a, a real lack of legs in this team at the moment, Andrew. It's concerned me of how leggy we've looked. Um, I think, you know, even when you look at last week, the substitutions changed the game from our point of view. But that midfield is hugely worrying. Chris Boyd said something today I found really interesting about John Lundstrom. And he said John Lundstrom's back to running about for the sake of running about. And he's completely out of position. And then you put Todd Cantwell in there, who's a bit of a maverick, who, who doesn't really play for the team as such. He's more of a number 10 who tries to wander about and, and has a free role kind of thing. You stick two guys in there that are kind of indisciplined or, or have lost their kind of positional sense. Keen Dill's just returning. I'm with Shona. Like the fact that he has been out for four months and bizarrely gets straight in the team and head an equal Raskin for me is it's not only concerning, but it's, it's it's very difficult to understand. Now I know that Nico against Motherwell didn't have the, the most outstanding performance, but in an area where we are lacking legs and enthusiasm, Andrew. I find it bizarre that we're making those choices to put Sterling on the bench when Sterling was man of the match against Celtic is, is one that, that doesn't make any sense either. And to pull him out for Barisic, who, remember, Barisic at Kilmarnock was, was rotten. I, I get to maybe add that balance. I get I understand that. But surely you just yeah. move Sterling somewhere else in the team. And I think that that's where it comes down to decisions that aren't making sense and goes back to my previous statement about like throwing shit at a wall. It's just something trying to get something to stick when I think the the obvious things are what you should be doing. Like I said it during the week that we need to become harder to beat and we need to consolidate and have a boring victory. And instead we were wide open and it's you know, we've spoke about this about the XGs and everything else, but your eyes tell you more than any stats or anything, and we were ridiculously wide open yesterday. The amount of transitions that Danda had on that right-hand side because he overloaded, Borna Barisic was completely lost, Fabio Silva didn't track back, and that midfield, and it basically meant, because Dowell's attacking-wise, he wasn't sitting in. So the space was miles away. Lundstrom was, was neither here nor there. Your defence is on top. And I just think that we looked, we looked, massively wild miles open. If you're talking about Andrew, and no disrespect to these guys, because I think they're decent, hard-working players, but come on, Josh Sims and Simon Murray ripping that team apart, come on. There needs to be a little bit of realisation here that, that whoever's on that bench, come on, Van Hayden, Alex Ray, you've got to see that, and you've got to fix it. And we could see it. And by the way, the vantage point at Ross County behind the goals is, is pretty shoddy. Like You can't really... 
But if we're all sitting there going... Stevie, it was still better than the angle we had on the TV. Yeah, absolutely. But my point is, see, when you're in the gantry at Ibrox, you've got a, a clear view of everything yeah. and you can make informed kind of rational points or, or irrational, whatever you want to say. But we had a crappy view behind the goals and we were all saying it. And it wasn't just me. We were all literally saying, this is a mess. Like, we need to shore this up. And, you know, yeah, we were still creating at the other end. Seema had a header that kind of got a really good save. Dessers had a couple of opportunities, which, again, he should do much, much better with. Repeat and fade with him, unfortunately. But where do we... Where does somebody go? We've got a real issue with that midfield. So in order to your question, Andrew, and how do you fix this? When we used to go through, and Kenny will tell you this as well, when we went through rocky spells under Walter or under Alex McLeish or whoever, they made us hard to beat. It's first key, make you hard to beat. And we, we're so ridiculously wide open that that's not happening. So first changes for me, Andrew, come in that midfield. And I know Sean has mentioned dropping Goldson. If Goldson could come in for Balogun, I would do that in a heartbeat. But it won't. I don't think it will happen. I think Sean is right. But the midfield needs fixed. And I think there's three spaces up for grabs. John Lundstrom's form has completely fallen away in the last three, four, five weeks. Whatever you want to kind of call it, he has been miles off it. Whether or not he's jaded or he's just lost or what they're asking him to do, I don't know. But I'm with Shona. I think his best forms come when there's somebody holding his hand next to him and, and they become hard to beat and they're a kind of tight unit in there, whether that's been Ryan Jack or, or whoever. Obviously, Jack's been missing for a long time, but Sterling... In there, even John Lundstrom, and this this is a wild shout, but you go back to Betis away when John Lundstrom was absolutely exceptional. He had um, Sterling come on for Sifuentes, who was in with him, and everybody said that was one of Sifuentes' best games in the 40-odd minutes before he went off injured. John Lundstrom, to me, plays, I agree with Shona, plays better with somebody there. So we need to figure out if Clement's not going to make the really big decisions, which I understand and I get six games to go might be really difficult to do. He has to shore that up quickly. I don't want to see him take out Suter and put Balogun in him because I think that's too easy. I don't want to see him start Fabio Silva and take him off after 50 minutes because, again, it's too easy. Start Scott Wright and then just don't play him again. It's too easy. Make the big decisions that really need made. Otherwise, we're going to end this season not by a point behind or four points behind. We're going to go to Parkhead and we'll get turned over because it'll be the same guys unless there's really, really big decisions made. Tighten this up and, and, and go from there. And Listen, the Tavernier Goldson question that you put to Shona is one that we've been having now for three years, four yeah. years, five years, whatever you want to say. It's the same, same guys, the same point. You know what I mean? And as I said about Geo, I said the same thing. You need to ditch these guys or they will cost you. Well, they cost you. Michael Beale cost him. So it's just Michael Beale had some Michael Beale had some other things that cost him the game, the, the, the job as well, SDV. But yeah, no, I take your point. What I mean by that is, sorry, Andrew, maybe didn't. I think you're right. But I mean that they've watched managers come and go. That's my point yeah. in being. It's the yeah, yeah. same core group that have watched the managers come and go. And Something has to give somewhere. Like, are we going to be sitting here in September and October having watched them do the same thing to Philip Clement? Potentially, if big decisions aren't made. So, look, there's a lot to happen this summer. A lot of big decisions to happen this summer. I think they're really crucial. For now, I'm not suggesting that we drop Goldson, Lundstrom, Tavernier, etc., but he has to be big enough to, to be able to look at it and identify who's properly not performing. Goldson, Tavernier, Lundstrom are all in that mix. Barisic, I think, has checked out. Personally, I think he's checked out. And he needs to be brave enough to go, if I'm all right to do it to Scott Wright and to do it to Nico Raskin and to whip Todd Cantwell off after 35 minutes in a game, maybe I should be big enough to make the really big decisions. Otherwise, I'm afraid that next week's pod We'll be talking about the same same things and the same issues. Because if we go again like we did on Sunday, away to Dundee on Wednesday night, whether that's at Perth or Dundee, then we will face the same problems. Can I just jump sorry, in? Sorry, yeah, I was going to, oh, sorry, I was going to jump in. I was actually going to ask Kenny the same question, actually, if you could answer the question. Do you not think it was a wee bit bizarre yesterday when we were losing 2-1 to take off the Acers and put Kimar Roof on? 
for me, if you're chasing a game, why do you not no. just have them both on the pitch? Uh, or why is Kemar Roof coming on to try and change this game? And maybe Kenny can answer that, but it seemed very strange, that substitution for me. I don't know. I thought Dessers was having a poor game. Um, and he was having a poor game, but he wasn't alone in that. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath with Kamar Roof at all from now to the end of the season. Uh, he'll try, uh, and he just looks not there. He just doesn't look the, the player that we know he can be. But the one thing I would say, Steve is talking about the making the big decisions, a statement decision there, and it has got to be made for me, is he has to drop Connor Golson for his own benefit as well. But yeah. we've got, let's not get carried away uh, with the the negativity of yesterday's result and actually let's try and focus on the next six games and the next six games if we win them we're going to win that league if we win eight we're going to win a treble now as highly unlikely as that feels and sounds at the minute the simple fact is that a statement uh, decision for a manager to make is to drop your vice captain but he is so far off it, I think, that I, and I'm, I'm going to kind of try and explain this very quickly. He's not going to drop, drop James Tavernier. He isn't. You know, the numbers are far too important to us. He's not going to do that. So you have to find a way of compensating for, for Tavernier's um, defensive frailties because he's so far up the pitch. And that is where the issue is. That particular side, and we've discussed this in the pod before, I've written about it before, that side is getting targeted by every single team in our league. Every single team does it. Uh, and it's a ball over the top, or it's a ball through the, through the middle, uh, and it's it's targeting in a space that you can double up on Conor Goldson in. And we are not covering for that at all. The midfield, as you say, Stevie, there's something all right there. They're not tracking the way they should be. That's where the, that's why the spaces are so big. So you have to look at that and say, what did we do there? Because whatever it, it has happened to Conor Goals, and it's a, it's a clear confidence issue, is the physicality that you need to be able to, to cover your own position and come across and cover the right back position as well. He's not got it. It's not happening there. Now, I am not 100% convinced that Leon Balligan's capable of doing that, so I would actually have Suter over there, and I would be very inclined to put Balligan at left, centre-half, and see if that, even just for Wednesday night, to see if that shows it up any, because that space is is enormous. And, you know... We all respect to Ross County, who totally deserved to win that game yesterday. They carved us open all day long, and particularly down... Again, we, we, we said it last week, our flanks weren't right last week either. But the, the, it was so badly exposed, and particularly on our right-hand side, it was mind-boggling to watch. Yeah. And what concerned me about watching that is that as players... Uh, any, you know, these are professional football players. They're seeing this happening, and they seem incapable of of actually saying to themselves, "This is what we need to do to show that space up." They they weren't doing it. They couldn't do it. And as Stevie said, on the right hand side, because Silva wasn't coming back, and Barisic, who had an absolute nightmare of a performance, I thought yesterday, just truly awful. Um, but he's done. Barisic has done as a Rangers player. We know this. And it's if you're if you're born of Barisic and you're asked, you're told that you're not playing against Celtic last week, and then you're told you're playing at Ross County, and then the guy in front of you is not bothering his backside to help you. He's checked out already. So yeah. you, what you'll not have seen it, guys. That you know because you were up at the game. But watch back on the two goals that end up coming in from the right-hand side. And Borna Barisic isn't even on screen on in either of them. He's so far away from where he's supposed to be. It's it's absolutely pathetic. And that's why Clement has, has taken him off. 
he just went, no, he's not, he's not even, there's no effort there. But the, the issue is every single area of the pitch at the minute. Yeah. And it, it, Clement has to find a way to get a result on Wednesday. And Stevie mentioned Walter Smith. And there was a reason why Walter Smith played with five centre-halves, two right-backs, and two holding midfielders at times. And it was to make sure we did not lose goals. And, uh, you know, people used to moan about it at the time. Steve, I remember, we hated it, but we got results. And it won his league titles. And something yeah. has to give with this. Because at the end of the day, we we are shipping goals all over the place at the minute. And it's got to stop. And it's got to stop on Wednesday. Because if we if we do, we are as difficult as it's going to be, we're still in this. So we need to look at getting this particular uh, shit show that we've watched in the last two, you know, in the last two games. It is. It's been an absolute nightmare yeah. to watch no, the last absolutely. two games. So we have to find a way of just winning a game of football at the minute. And as Stevie said, that was what Walter Smith was a master of, was making sure we found a way to win a game. So, so sorry for the rant, and I, I don't really know how we go Can about I- to be honest, I was expecting three 10 minute long monologues about how shit Rangers were. So, frankly, yeah. you've shown admirable restraint, as have Kenny's the other Kenny's two. right, though, Andrew, just to quickly say yeah. as well see if we're as open as we've been. I think the last six league games, we can see the goal in every one. If we're, if we're as open as that and we continue to be, you can forget it. You can absolutely forget it. And I think, and it goes back to maybe it's a wee pop at Clermont, and it's not meaning to come that way, but Clermont's made easy decisions, big decisions, right? When he's taken off Cantwell to make a show of him or he's he's dropped right or, you know, Fabio Silva comes off after 50 minutes. No, I get all that. That's all kind of obvious ones. If he doesn't make the big ones, and that's my worry, like Kenny says, I think Goldson has is, is completely fell off. Completely fell off. So I agree with that. I think there's huge questions about what John Lundstrom's doing in midfield. James Tavernier. I think you're right, Andrew. I don't think you can afford to drop him because of his numbers, but you need to fix it. You need to yeah. either put somebody out there to help him or do something to stop those areas. If Ross County are targeting your fullbacks and overloading their midfield with ease, by the way, you've got real, real problems. So I'm not sure what he does. I'm not sure how he fixes it in, in a short space of time. And we can all sit here and go and play Raskin and do this and do that. But he needs to do something. And if he doesn't, then and if we go with the same kind of style and set up and are as open, then that will happen again, unfortunately. Yeah. Listen, folks, we could go for another two hours tonight. Um there there's a multitude of issues with this Rangers team. Everyone's got a view. I think all of us are just kind of in agreement there needs to be a change. Um, because what is happening right now isn't sustainable long term and certainly not if we stand any chance of getting anything else out of this season um, as we come into the final six, seven, maybe even eight games uh, if we uh, if we manage to get past Hearts in the semi-final. So listen, um, to try, hopefully, to end on somewhat of a positive, we have our inaugural winner of our Pie of the Week competition. Uh, it's very important and serious news, and I should want you to all to treat it with the same gravitas as you know any kind of Rangers news. Um, Karen Kent, uh, one of our lovely loyal listeners slash viewers, uh, has uh, entered saying, "Love the pod, guys. Cheers, thank you." Um, only one nomination possible: the failed trialist, Mr. Michael Stewart, the only person commentating on football that doesn't actually know the rules of the game and just plays to the green media. Now. I find nothing in that that I can argue with. All of that seems perfectly factual. All of it seems entirely deserving of a Pie of the Month awards. And what's more, I think it's very fair that that results in some free pies from our lovely friends over at Pie Sports. So congratulations, Karen. Uh, I'm sure that Stevie will be reaching out to you within minutes of us finishing recording this podcast because uh, he's very well organised like that. Um, and yeah, what we want, guys, obviously, over the next few weeks, uh, this is every month. So we want your nominations in. Uh, we understand if you want to nominate half the Rangers team at the moment. I can certainly understand that. Um, get your entries in. Let us know what you uh, what you think the pie of the month is, um, whoever it might be. 
And uh, yeah, you just stand a chance of winning some free pies, which is always great. So um, please get those uh, nominations in. There's also just an ongoing code that we have with Pi Sports, which uh, will get you 12 and a half percent off your pies, any purchase uh, that you make there. All the links and uh, you know details on entry are in the description of the podcast below. So please do check that out. Uh, Shona, thank you first. Um, I appreciate you struggling through various technical difficulties to be able to join us tonight. Uh, so thank you very much for joining. I always appreciate talking to you and uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks very much, guys. I'm absolutely gutted that Stevie never made Pride of the Month. So, guys, <laughs> the next time, just going to put in a few extra votes. That would uh, that might have helped the algorithm of um, of Stevie getting Pie of the Month. So, uh, yeah, guys, cheers for that one. But it's been noted. So, um, but no, no, thanks very much, guys. It was a really, really good pod. And uh, yeah, looking forward to. Well, should I say, are we looking forward to whatever we're going on Wednesday, Stevie? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Look. It's it's not great at the moment, but Andrew, the thing is, see, we're doing something like this. I always find this quite interesting. We could go on here and and be, you know, it was a blip, and we've got six games to go, and if we win all them, we'll win the treble and stuff like that, and we'll smoke up people's arse and be disingenuous. I don't think that's what we are. I think we have to call it as we see it, and I think it would be extremely naive to sit here and say there isn't big warning signs and, and there isn't big problems at the moment. So I can only call it what it is. Um, there was a lot of sweary words, so apologies about that. But it's real, it is. It's, it's got to be what we feel and what we think at the time. So, and I stood there in Ross County yesterday, as Shona did, and as plenty of other thousands of other Rangers fans did, and it was it was ridiculously poor. So, call a spade when you know a spade when it's required. And I just hope that the next couple of pods we do over the next week are a lot more enthusiastic and a lot more positive. And it'll take some big decisions, I think, to get there. Well, thank you too, Stevie, for that. <laughs> uh, listen, folks, uh, it's been a pleasure. Kenny, how could I possibly forget you, mate? Um, it's always a pleasure to talk range with you. Yeah. I'm going to go and pick my spleen up and back up off the floor. <laughs> Stevie's right. There's no point in sugarcoating that uh, yesterday. It was appalling from start to finish um big issues big problems and it's up to a manager to make decisions and fix it and fix it immediately he's got to get that sorted very very quickly or yep. the, the, the season will peter out and and uh a, a tiny whisper yeah well the positive is finally we are going to have a game against Dundee to hopefully pick ourselves up from quite quickly. Uh, that'll be coming up on Wednesday. One way or another, we are finally going to play this game. Dundee are obviously higher in the league, but at this point, I don't care anymore. I just want to finally play these guys. It's the third time that we've had this chance to. This time, it's actually going to happen, either at their place or somewhere else. I quite frankly, I couldn't give a damn. Uh, Listen, folks, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you, to our listeners, viewers. It's been lovely uh, you tuning in, checking us out. Um, the feedback continues to be really positive. I love to see that. Um, we appreciate all you guys uh, are doing to help us grow this thing. Um, it's still relatively new, but we thank you for everyone listening, tuning in, watching. Uh, it's been uh, it's been heartening to see, uh, unfortunately, even in the uh, in not so great circumstances. But we hope you continue to do so. And uh, yeah, until we talk to you again, bye for now. Four Lads Bite Size Podcast is proud to be sponsored by Rhino Express and Clyde View Joinery, certified fire door installer and maintainer. Also in association with Rangers Pools, Zenith Coins and Alexander Campbell Interiors. Please share and follow the pod to help us grow. We hope you enjoyed the show.